Goody Award and I'm here going to Sky Mart. Today's lesson is simply that I'm here to how we can derive simply, simply that's ratio A and potential T from this from this diagram. So we are given the inclined plane. We are we have an object which is being placed here. And we best name that object as mass M1. We also have another object which has been hung on this straight, which is mass M2. So in this case, this mass is being pulled towards this side. But the diagram is not complete. But as a physics school student, we have to be able to complete or insert the things that which we think they are missing. So the first point, we have to resolve this point. Because if this object is being pulled this way, definitely we are going to have another force which will act towards this side. So if we complete the diagram, let's say we resolve it prior to the plane, here are going to be the weights, which is W times S sin theta. But we know weight is mass times the gravity, and the mass is M1, it's going to be M1 G times sin sin theta. So this is going to be the force that acts here. Yeah, the definitely say this mass, this object will act downward. So its weight is going to be mg. But since mass, the mass is labeled as m2, it's going to be m2g. So these are the things that you need to add when you come across set of diagram. So how can we have the derivation of A and that of the tension T? Let's consider these forces which are parallel to this plane. If we consider this, this is an object and this, no, the tension is being pulled towards the side, T, and this weight is acting towards the side, which is M1 G sine theta, and this mass is labeled as M1. You see? But we are quite aware that when an object is stationary, there are only two forces that act on that object. One of the forces will be the weight of the object, which will act downwards, and the normal reaction, which will act vertical upward. The other point again, when forces are moving, when an object is in motion, there are only four forces which will act on that, on that body. Let's say if I'm walking the way I'm doing now, there are four forces that act on me. One, my thrust, which is pushing me forward, and there is a reaction, there is a force which tends to pull me backward, and that force, we call it to be the drag force or the friction. And my weight will be acting downwards and my normal reaction. So when an object is in motion, there are four forces that act on it. The thrust, which is the forward force, the drag force or the friction, which is the backward force, the weight, which is the downward force, and the normal reaction, which is the upward force. But when an object is stationary like this ball, this black, this white ball is stationary. The only two forces that act on the weight of the ball, which is acting downward, and the normal reaction, which is acting vertically upward. We can only have one force which will act on an object when an object is falling freely, when it tends to, when it tends to express weightlessness. Let's say if an object, if I try to drop this, this matter, it's simply expressing weightlessness. Because there is only one force that acts on it, because like, which is the weight. There is no normal reaction. That, this tells us that we can only get weightlessness when there is what, no support and when there is no normal reaction. So weightlessness is caused by simply the absence of support and normal reaction. So if we consider these forces, we have normally, let's say we have these forces acting upward. If this force has force of 5 newton, this is for force of 5 newton. This tells us that the, this object is in equilibrium. Why this object is in equilibrium? Because the forces are the same. They have the same magnitude. Because if you find the net force here, you're going to be 5 minus 5, which is 0. And when you have a 0 force, it tells us that the object is in equilibrium. If we have, let's say here, 6 newton. So the resultant force is going to be 6 minus 5, which is 1 meter. So the object is not in equilibrium. You have an object is in equilibrium when the upward forces are equal to downward forces. So when the upward force is equal to downward force, that force is in equilibrium. If the upward force is not equal to downward force, that object is not in equilibrium. So we have to take note of that. So we want to find the net force here. Net force, net force which is R, is going to be the upper, this force is greater than this. Why we say this force is greater than this? Because this object is being pulled. Because since the pulling force is along this side, this must be greater than this. So it's going to be T minus this weight, which is M1G sine theta. 
But net force is expressed as F equals to MA. So this net force is going to be M1, A, because the mass is M1, equals to T minus M1G sine theta. Let's make T the subject. We we'll transpose this. So it's going to be M1A plus M1G sine theta. This gives us equation 1. So you see, M1G equals to T. This gives us equation 1. So if we move forward again, let's have the next point. Let's consider this downward force again. If this downward force is also considered, here is M2G and the tension is acting by scale of all. This is mass M2. This is how the object is pulling. So you can see clearly the body is pulling downwards. So definitely, since the body is pulling downward, this weight here must be greater than this. You see? Here now the body is being pulled here. So this is greater than this. Well, here the body is being thrown downward because the body is moving downward. So this weight of this object must be greater than the tension. So you're going to be M to G, the net force, F or R, is going to be M to G minus T. So this net force now, which is M to A, equals to M to G minus T. So if we make T the subject, we transpose T, so this will remain M to G minus M to A. This gives us equation 2. So if we equate the two equations now, equating, equating equation 1, and equation 2. Equation 1 says we are in T equals to T. So like we have the axiom property with A equals to 3 and B equals to 3, we are going to say A equals to B. You see? So if this value is equal to T and this equals to T, we are going to say this force M1A plus M1G sine theta must be equal to M2G minus M2A. You see that? So now let's collect like terms. I think we have here A, A. We try to bring A together and as well as G together. So this minus 2 move forward. We have M1A plus M2A equals to M2G minus M1G sine theta. We have, can see A is common. We factorize M1 plus M2. Here G is common. We say M2 minus M1G Side theta. So let's say if you are looking for A, that's which one. Divide both sides by M1 plus M2. Dividing throughout by M1 plus M2, the aspiration will be G into M2 minus M1 G sin theta divided by M1 plus M2. This brought us to equation 3. This is one of the derivations we are looking for because we are required to derive the like simple demonstration of the inclined plane. So having A to be this formation, the next point, let's say we are looking for the tension, the tension that acts on this curve. Because you can see the same string that moves forward. So the tension that acts here is going to be the same as here. So the tension on this slope will be the same here. So either you consider equation one or equation two. Either of the equations you think that considering will yield all the same thing. Let's say we consider two, we say from the tension T equals to M2G minus M2A. So T equals to M2G minus M2 into. And the aspiration A now is this. So if we substitute it, we have M2 minus M1G sine theta all over M1 plus M2. So if we continue, we have M2G minus, we multiply M2G times going to be M2G into M2 minus M1G sine theta divided by M1 plus M2. So we move forward, the tension will be M2G minus, we expand, we say M2G, we to the M2G minus M, M1, we to the M1, M2G, G sine theta. In this case, G should not be here because it has already been factorized. So G should not be here. G should not be here. So if we expand M to G times M to G, we go to the M to M2, M2, G minus M to G times we go to the M1, M2, G sine theta all over M1 plus M2. So here yeah, we find the LCD, the least common denominator of these two denominators. So we have M1 
plus M2. So this will serve as the LCD. So this into this is this. You go to the M2G into M1 plus M2 minus this into this is 1. One times this is just going to give us all. Even if we don't factorize, you can just let it to be the same, which is M2 minus M1. M2, M2G minus M1, M2G sine theta. So if we expand this bracket, going to be M2G, M1, M2, G, because if M2G multiplied by this is M1, M2G, plus M2G multiplied by this is going to be M2, M2G, minus we have M2, M2G, minus M1, M2G, sine theta, all divided by M1 plus M2. So yeah, there are certain terms which we cancel. If we look at M2, M2G, M2, M2G, we cancel this, we cancel this. And we have, but in this case, if we expand this value, minus times minus, this is supposed to be plus, this will be plus, and this will be plus. So if we add M1, M2G, and plus M1, M2G, so this is going to be T equals to M1, M2G, plus M1, M2, G, sine theta, all over M1, plus M2. So in this version, we can see M1, M2, G is common. M1, M2, and G, they are common. So if we factor them, we're going to be M1, M2, G into, we have 1 plus sine theta divided by M1 plus M2. So this is just the other way of writing the tension T of the material. T equals to M1, M2, G into 1 plus sine theta divided by this. Thank you all.